uh, but uh, they give us an allotment of how many people can work on a certain um, process and how much uh, of a budget they have and if we consider then how, mon how many people can work on this project and uh, what has to be done then it, once you do some calculations you realize that people are going to have to spend a certain amount of time, each person is going to have to spend a certain amount of time and the only way that that can be allowed is if you cheat using your uh, dosimeter. Um, Everyone understands this, even the people at TEPCO understand this, but they do not say it publicly. And as a result, if a problem later occurs, they can say, well, the people on site, the workers made their own arbitrary decision to do this. It's not our fault. Another example, immediately after the first hydrogen explosion, TEPCO gave out an order uh, to, or uh, a request uh, to all of these um, uh, dispatching, labor dispatching companies, and they said, send us people who don't mind dying. At that time, uh, it was really very much a panic situation, perhaps, but um, normally when you enter any area where there might be possible uh, radiation exposure, you're always supposed to be issued a special uh, kind of uh, booklet or, or that uh, it basically uh, measures or uh, monitors uh, your uh, total radiation exposure. However, um, at that moment, right after the hydrogen explosion, no such booklets were issued. Also, normally before you enter such a site, you have to undergo a health examination. Health examinations are also foregone uh, at this time. Also, usually there is a, a list uh, of names of workers who attend a site and that list also was not prepared. Well, I guess in retrospect you could say that this was an extraordinary situation because that's how panicked everyone was. In spite of this, however, once uh, things settled down, uh, then TEPCO turned to uh, the companies uh, that it asks uh, to find people to work at the site. Uh, we, they call them partner companies. TEPCO turned to the partner companies and suddenly demanded that uh, the uh, lists of workers who attended the site and uh, the results of the health examinations for all the workers be submitted to TEPCO. Um, however, uh, when we consider that uh, in uh, a March, April, that very, very difficult time, uh, Many, many people were assembled, uh, and because uh, these lists of names were not put together, no health examinations were conducted, really there's no way to track down uh, who was uh, at the site in March and April. Um, most of them have already left the site. Um, many of them have left their companies, so it's just very, very difficult to find uh, these people. And also the fact that they are now asking for health examinations uh, to be conducted, or not only for the health examination records in the past, but for health examinations to be conducted now for people who worked at the site in March in April, it, these health examination results really make no sense. They would have, they're meaningless to conduct them at such a, a late date. Still, uh, TEPCO is demanding of its partner companies, and its partner companies are basically uh, its uh, subcontractors, uh, to produce this data. As a result, what is happening? Uh, and the re in regard to what is happening, perhaps this is a very Japanese way uh, of uh, people uh, working, or maybe it's only a, a way of working that is unique to the nuclear power plant industry in Japan. I do not know. But uh, under normal circumstances, uh, these uh, subcontractors, uh, these partner companies, uh, we should say, look, TEPCO, it's too late to ask for this kind of information. We cannot possibly produce it. And they should, in other words, uh, reject uh, the uh, request or order from uh, TEPCO. But being Japanese or being part of the nuclear power industry, I don't know why this is so but they do not say that because they realize that their livelihoods, their futures are very, very closely intertwined with uh, TEPCO. So what they are doing, and TEPCO, again, is not giving any specific orders. Uh, they understand the situation, but they are putting pressure on the partners' companies to come up with this uh, information. And as a result, what is happening is that these partner companies have no option but to basically fabricate documents and basically submit them. TEPCO knows this is what's happening, uh, but uh, it can always fall back on its public statements and say we never ordered any of this to, be, uh, to happen. And if this uh, news gets out into the mass media, they can always protect themselves by saying, well, it was the partner companies that on their own initiative did this. This is what is happening with all nuclear power plants in Japan. However, um, I'm not uh, thinking of this as a situation in a very, very hopeless way. I think there are still uh, lights of hope. Uh, in other words, what I'm saying is that uh, the manufacturers, the people who have the technological background, uh, people at Hitachi and Toshiba have many, many actual ideas as to how to bring closer to this terrible situation. Uh, however, uh, what has happened is that the Japanese government and TEPCO have officially declared in their announcements that basically uh, the situation is under control. We have gone over the worst part of the crisis. In fact, as a result, most most Japanese people are under the impression that uh, things are more or less winding down. It's only a matter of time before everything uh, is completely solved, resolved. As a result of this uh, uh, 
understanding among the uh, general public, uh, the budget for dealing with this accident has been drastically reduced. What this means is that although the people from Hitachi and uh, Toshiba come with many, many good ideas uh, that if implemented could help resolve the situation very quickly or, or in a much better way, they're told by TEPCO, I'm sorry, we don't have any money, we can't do this. So this is the kind of um, unfairness or injustice uh, on which uh, the nuclear power plant industry uh, is based at present. And it is on the uh, basis of this um, structure of the nuclear power plant industry that the Yakuza have been able to uh, increase their influence. And uh, I would like to explain, however, that uh, after the uh, Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant accident, it was not as though the Yakuza suddenly barged in uh, on this situation and forced themselves in. Uh, the Yakuza were originally, uh, even before the accident, a part of the local community. Uh, in other words, they were part of the local, regional nuclear power plant uh, community. Their presence is something that um, people in the region have always accepted. Uh, this is something, again, however, uh, that if we were to uh, confront uh, to, uh, TEPCO with this information, they, their first response would be to actually deny it. And if, however, we were able to present proof that Yakuza were involved uh, in uh, the nuclear power plants or the um, resolution of this uh, accident, they would probably say, well, see, it has nothing to do with us. It's uh, the partner companies that on their own initiative uh, arbitrarily uh, began to work with Yakuza. We have nothing to do with this. Hey. Um, I have many, many other things to say, but I know I'm running out of time, so I would like to conclude by saying one last thing, which is that 1F, and what I mean by 1F, it, this means the Fukushima Daiichi, or number one nuclear power plant, where this accident took place, uh, the uh, bringing to a closure, bringing to a resolution of this accident, uh, there is absolutely no progress being made. In other words, I believe that we are now beginning the main event uh, in regard to this, uh, ac the aftermath of this accident. Thank you. Thank you. 腕時計型のピンホールカメラです。見てもらいたいと思います。So I'd like to show you some photographs that I took while I was working at in Fukushima and the camera that I used was what I just showed you. It's actually a camera embedded in a watch. Uh it has a great deal of memory for megabytes, mega mega gigas, sorry, MGs, sorry. Um and it uh is able to tell take not only um still shots but also um moving um, images as well. It can also record sound. Uh, although it has great memory, it still has a, it's called a pinhole camera. In other words, uh, the, the resolution uh, of the photographs are not very good. And basically, because I was writing for a magazine, I took a lot of still photographs, but I also did, uh, just in case, take some uh, moving pictures as well. Uh, so we didn't really uh, talk about this uh, before in advance, but um, whenever explanations are necessary, I'll add some comments. This uh, is in the uh, Toshiba's uh, shelter where uh, workers would uh, basically wait for to be called or take a rest. It shows you some of the, um, a few, uh, excuse me, a slide before that shows you some of the um, exposure uh, figures. Um, I was working in July and August, which are the hottest months of the year. As a result, uh, more people uh, were suffering uh, from uh, heat exposure or heat stroke rather than um, radiation uh, exposure. And as a result, there were many of these uh, um, uh, excuse me, posters um, set up all over the place warning people to be, um, uh, be very careful about not uh, suffering from heat stroke. Having said this, however, almost every once every two or three days, someone would collapse and have to be carried away and they would not be important enough or serious enough to be covered by the news. Uh, this is a store uh, in uh, Iwaki a City and uh, it basically sells um, work clothes for people who work in construction, etc. And already when I arrived, they were already selling something called Tybeck, which are special uh, clothing that you wear to protect yourself from radiation exposure. The, you know. um, in regard to 1F, uh, the Fukushima Daiichi uh, plant, uh, everyone had to wear a mask that completely covered your face. Uh, and uh, there were five or six different uh, types that you could choose from. Uh, and this was the one that was most popular among the workers. The reason it was most popular among the workers was that it was very easy to put on and take off. Also, even if you had glasses on, uh, you would not have to suffer any kind of leakage. I'm just uh, on the left hand side this is my name tag uh, that I wore when I was working and on the right hand side this is a dosimeter uh, it measures only uh, gamma rays and beta rays but as I mentioned earlier if you just reverse it and, f and have the opening uh, facing yourself then you can extend uh, the amount of time you can work in other words you can cut down on uh, the readings uh, that, lim that uh, express your ex radiation exposure excuse me I chose uh, this mask rather than the other mask that I showed you earlier, which was very popular because I thought this looked cooler. It was more stylish. Always at every site uh, there would be these gentlemen. You see that they have a red stripe uh, on their backs. Uh, they are uh, basically uh, people who look after the safety of the workers and who also work to monitor the radiation exposure levels. Uh, they don't actually do the construction work. They just watch us, monitor us. 
I would also like to explain that um, on the bottom right hand side you, uh, corner you see some uh, dates and some um, times, but uh, I was already intending uh, from the very beginning uh, to uh, do an expose uh, on this matter, and if the actual uh, uh, photographs with the actual dates and times had been shown, then probably the uh, a subcontractor that hired me would have been exposed and I wanted to protect him. So from the very beginning I intended to cheat on the number so the dates are not accurate. Uh, this is a building uh, that is uh, on the left hand side uh, of the property as soon as you enter the main gate uh, and this was uh, a building that was used by the partner uh, companies where people could uh, take some rest. Uh, what I wanted, there was a lot of equipment inside, but what I wanted to show you, actually I couldn't show you because there's actually a big whiteboard behind uh, the uh, rolls of equipment that uh, I was, the person was leaning against. And the point about this whiteboard is that if you wanted to have a cigarette, you could take off your mask and smoke behind the, uh, the whiteboard and nobody would notice. The, in many, many places uh, there were these meters and basically uh, they calculate uh, the uh, humidity and uh, the temperature and as a result of these two uh, figures they are able to indicate when people should not be working. But as a result of the fact that uh, I was working in the midsummer season, uh, all of these meters uh, said you cannot work here, you cannot work here and as a result nobody paid any attention to these meters. Uh, this uh, is in regard to the masks and uh, the um, Tybex, or which are the protective radiation um, uh, clothing. Uh, basically, uh, if you go to work uh, at the power plant, you have to wear all of this, uh, an entire set uh, in the morning. When you come back, you wear another set. Uh, and then uh, if you have to go again, you again wear another set and come back another set. In other words, um, of course, everything is... Uh, uh, monitored and uh, for, ch for uh, radiation exposure, but uh, generally if you make two trips, uh, you wear four pieces of clothing and four masks and everything has to be discarded and that's a mountain of equipment that has to be discarded, clothing and masks. Uh, workers uh, are also screened for radiation exposure levels uh, and uh, they, are expo they are screened when they come back uh, f uh, after they have worked. Uh, but for those of you who um, have ever touch this kind of equipment, use this kind of equipment, you know that it is frankly very easy to cheat on the figures. The medical clinic within the J village uh, where the crews were working uh, and uh, on the surface it seemed like a very nice clinic because everybody had free access to it. Uh, it was free uh, and even if you came uh, and uh, had an examination uh, or feeling bad, etc., uh, the information would not be disclosed to the parent company. Uh, however, the reality was that uh, if you stayed too long and, uh, and visited this clinic, then you would probably miss the bus that would be going back to the dormitories. And if then you had to take a taxi, it would cost 15,000 yen, $150, uh, to get back uh, to the village. So um, I watched how many people actually used uh, this clinic, and it would only be maybe perhaps three people would come in, maybe four or five at the very most. Um, in case uh, there was uh, an incident where uh, someone was found to have suffered from acute uh, he heavy levels of radiation exposure, uh, there was great uh, state-of-the-art equipment, for example, a special tent would be erected, etc. But it was never used, uh, as far as I uh, understood. Uh, the kind of um, uh, medicines that were given out were basically cold medications, things like that. And I would also like to mention that all of the doctors who were employed by this clinic uh, were employees of TEPCO. In regard to um, acute radiation poisoning, uh, it is widely known that uh, the first uh, part of your body that is damaged is your blood uh, supply. Uh, as a result, uh, from the very beginning, immediately after this accident, uh, experts in the medical field uh, began to say that uh, for workers who were going into uh, the nuclear power plant uh, territory, uh, in order to deal with the possibility that they might eventually suffer from acute radiation poisoning, they should have uh, some of their blood samples um, uh, extracted and preserved. Uh, specifically, uh, these are stem cells that uh, produce uh, blood. Uh, in fact, uh, the person who m most uh, said this was a doctor named Dr. Taniguchi of the Toranamon Hospital in Tokyo. Uh, he, is a uh, he is a specialist in hematology, and he immediately uh, called upon many, many... Uh, this is a scene from uh, where I was working. We could see uh, reactor uh, building number four and number three. And number three, we could also see the uh, uh, fuel pool, uh, spent fuel pool. But uh, I had great skepticism about what was actually in the pool, if there were any pellets inside there remaining.